I'm going to show you cool ways to use textures in your tracks. So first, you either want textures from a sample pack or freesound.org or your own recorded volley samples. So if you have an iPhone here, you can use voice memos. You can get like a piece of paper. Then you can click copy on it. Then on a Mac, you can instantly paste it. You can get like a piece of paper. Here's a little example of what you can do. Start off, I want to show you how you can add more texture to like a beat. So right now, here's a beat I have in this song. Feels like you can use more movement in some way. So I have this folder full of folly samples. If you make your grid dashed with Command or Control 4, then drag all of your samples onto the grid. They will all play right after each other. So then I'll just consolidate them with Command or Control J. And then you'll see we have all of our samples consolidated into one clip. So if you have Live 11 or before, you can use something like Granulator. But since I'm on Live 12, I'm going to use Granulator 3. I'm going to drag our new file into Granulator here. Then you'll see we can just scroll through our file. I'm going to go ahead and add some multiband compression. Then what we're going to do is record ourselves playing with all the parameters in this. So I'm going to get a new audio track, take audio from Granulator 3 here, and start recording. So to make shit vary a little bit, you can start this variation knob, which varies each of these parameters. But you can also make a random LFO, make a stereo effect so it's different on each ear, and then click on all these different knobs and turn up the randomness and the LFO. You can even turn up the spread a little bit. It also might be worth it playing with some of these grand modes. Loop lets you reverse. You also do cloud, which lets you overlap multiple grins. Now if you want to take it even further, you can get something like grain delay. Turn down the dry wet a little bit. Turn up the spray to have different values on the right and left. Now say if I wanted to control this with my mouse at the same time as controlling the position of the granulator, you can drop this slide knob if you have an MPE instrument like Push 3. So you can slide your finger on your device to change the position while moving your mouse on the XY of this grand delay over here. I might make the X axis delay time and keep the Y axis as frequency.
then once you feel like you got enough texture, you can stop recording. At this point, you could totally use this sample as it is right now. But if you want to take it further, you can get something like hybrid reverb. Reverse your entire sample. And you can take one of your Foley's or another percussion sample, drop that as the impulse response. If you want, you can just keep it convolution only. Play with the size. Also consolidate your reverse clip, turn it to beats mode, choose the single arrow, and then turn down the transient envelope. You can even get phaser flanger. Mess like the envelopes a little bit. Then you can freeze and flatten that as it is. Then we can go ahead and use any of these textures in our track. Now it sounds cool just leaving it as it is, but there's some ways to like spice up the beat, I think, if we were to warp it. We can maybe do something like texture mode and stretch out this beat a lot. And then if you go to the envelopes tab, which if you're on 11 or earlier, he'll be on this side. You can turn the grid into a dash grid and modulate the max percentage of your grain size. This is flux, so you can do the same for grain size. If you want to do it to the whole clip, you can just select it, duplicate, scrunch it, extend it, invert it. Then consolidate that. Then once it's consolidated, you can change it back to beats mode. And then instead of preserving transients, you can change it to something like a bar or half a bar and go back to the one arrow. Turn the envelope down a little bit. That sounds kind of cool as right now. In this case, I want to consolidate that then reverse it and then just offset it about half a bar. And then you'll get a cool kind of layer for your snare. Another way you can layer texture is by either going to your drum loops or going to your lead and put an envelope follower on it and mapping it to a volume macro, like on utility or something. So this texture is following the melody. If you want, you could frequency shift your texture.
Auto pin is also nice on the sample and hold mode. It could also be cool to make a delay offset. Or make it fall or rise. But this kind of fucks with the transient a little bit. If you make it rise. So last I want to show how you can layer samples through MIDI. So if you group your synth into an instrument rack, then drag a texture into the drop section. You can slice up your sample if it's long enough. Or you can convert it to sampler. Get a velocity MIDI device. Turn it on fixed. And random up all the way. Then in the MIDI tab of sampler, make a velocity modulate sample offset. And then turn that up to 100. So now it will be starting at random points of the sample. And now we're also going to want to make the sustain mode uh, loop with reverse and stuff. You can crossfade it. May want to drop the release a little bit. It'd also be fun to turn up random pan. may also be fun. So if you want to sustain the note and not have it pan to a certain place the whole time, you can get an LFO. You can make it sample and hold or sine wave. Turn up the phase a little bit, or actually spin it and make it modulate panorama. Turn that up. you can fine tune your ADSR. If you have 12 but not like a full sample library or access to microphones, you can get meld and use one of the texture synth engines and use the built-in modulators. Phaser is a nice filter to use on this. Now we already have like a weird texture we can use. If you want the wave files to sound design sessions like these, you can get some at my Patreon. That's all I have for this video.